recording. All right, you guys. Uh, basically, uh, Tracks Editor is the tool today we're going to study and look into it. Let me start my arm. Um, tracks Editor is not used in, uh, as much as it should be used. It's kind of a, a, a misunderstood uh, type of tool. All right? People have tendency to uh, um, think it's too hard to use or too... Uh, and it's not too hard. It's just a little different. It's a nonlinear editor. What does a nonlinear editor mean? Right? It just means that you can create different motions as a video clip, just like a video clip, and you can throw them one after the others and mix them up the way you want. It doesn't destroy each other, basically. Right? It's nonlinear. Okay? Linear would be you know exactly where you're going. It's nonlinear. Video game is nonlinear, so that's perfect for us. All right, so that's the tool for us, for sure. The thing that is really neat with the Tracks Editor, uh, guys, is that it has a relative system if you want to, instead of an absolute. You guys are used to work in absolute system. This is gonna be something new to you, all right? Relative systems are basically like additive system also, all right? Meaning, that system has both. If you have just a regular, what you use usually, okay, is that you have an animation, for example, right here, okay, and you're gonna copy it, so, and you put it right there again. Well, obviously, if your ball is going from here to here, at that point right there, it'll restart here and do that again, all right? Okay, well, with the Tracks Editor, it doesn't have to do that. If you put them one next to each other, it will continue for you. It'll understand. So if your ball was doing going from point A to point B, and then you add it, another of the same one, you copy that animation and put it next to it, then your ball next will go point A to point B, but the point B has moved farthest away. All right? That's how it works relatively. Okay? Now, the other one is that if you copy them not next to each other, but on top of each other like that, it'll duplicate, it'll double the power of it. So, that means if you have a ball that, does, that goes from here to here in bouncing, that's all you did, is one lot like that. You can actually, what you can do is that you can actually make it go up and down, but just like you would, like that, by actually, you know, all the inverse, by adding or subtracting animation to each other. All right? But what you can do is that right here, that one can be three of that one together. You know what I'm saying? Those three. Add it will give you the big one. Then you take one out and you have a smaller one. You take another one and then you have the final one. And like that, you have a ball bouncing with one key. All right? It's very powerful and, uh, in that situation, uh, in the mode. So because it has an additive and a relative mode, basically, which is for animation, big time. The only thing you have to be careful, obviously, because it's an additive or relative lead to the first clip, to the clip to copying basically, well, it's always the same. It becomes very redundant, okay? The same thing over and over and over. So you have to be careful uh, sometimes not be too obvious in that. The only really good thing also is that you can trim the clip, okay? Basically change the clip without destroying the original one, basically, all right? And you can change the speed also, all right? Without destroying anything. It's non-destroyable, and that's very powerful, okay? Let's look at a simple animation and how it works uh, in Maya. So let me make just a simple ball. Right here. Okay, you guys. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to key three channels right now. The only channels I will be using, let me put them properly. Where they should be belonging in the middle. All right. I'm going to make only three keys. Uh, I like to, um, you're going to have to create clips, basically. All right. Every time you do a motion, you create a clip out of it. Uh, I like to, because it's video game, we need to have the same beginning and the end. So I'll, I will center it properly by having the three channels that I might move right here, you guys. All right. Then I'm going to key those. So I select those three channels, and Spencer right here, and I'll right click and I say key selected at zero. I mean at one right here, okay? Then I'm going to go to 12 right there, for example. And I'm going to do um, the same thing again. Key selected. All right? So it's not moving anything. It's perfect for us. Now we go to 6. And I'm just going to grab it and move it up. Like that. 
and I'm going to key that channel right here, which is in my situation, the Y channel. Okay. Now we have an animation up, you know, pretty bad. Okay. It's nothing. All right. Just the ball up and down. We're gonna, um, going to go and make sure the speed is proper. We're going to put it at other and I'll put it at 30 frames per second for now. All right. So that's our animations for now. Now it's time to create a clip in a tracks editor. Uh, tracks editor, uh, multiple ways to access it. A lot of people like to do one thing. The main way to access it is window, rendering, uh, animation editor, tracks editor. Okay. But um, sometimes if you, I don't do that because I got two monitors at home. But if you don't have two monitors at home, you're better off creating a special setup on the screen right here, all right, to actually separate them, all right, so to have everything in front of you so you can see what's going on and see it right there, okay? Uh, if you have two screens, then that's no big deal. You just pull it on the other screen, okay? So here we have only one screen, so let me do that trick. Uh, so I'll just go for a two right here, all right? And I'm going to change the bottom one of the panel by going to panel, uh, perspective, back to the perspective that I had. And that one panel, panel, and I'm going to choose the tracks editor. Right here. All right. Very simple. It's right there. Now, we have that selected. What we are going to do is we want to make sure that in, uh, hold on. Auto load is selected, first of all. All right. So let me, uh, yeah, we're good. And after that, we're going to create animation clip. All right. In the option, right here, we have a bunch of options. God, the projector is pretty bad. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you have the name, obviously. So let's put, let's call it up and down. All right. Uh, leave keys in timeline. If you want to leave the keys in timeline, if you want to keep those keys to tweak it for the next one, you know, as the base for your next animation, your next clip, then you would do that. I don't do that unless I really have to. It's needed for my production. All right. I'd rather erase them so the next clip is clean. I don't me it don't get messed up. All right. Then after that, you have clip put in visor only or clip put in tracks editor and visor. You want both. The visor is an older place where you can find textures, clips, and a bunch of stuff. It's very useful. Nobody uses it anymore. Um, it is found uh, right here in the general editor window, visor right there. Okay? And you get, it takes a while to come because it go fetch quite a bit. Uh, it does fetch all the texture samples, all the o ocean samples. All right? Character clip, unused clips. I mean, there's a lot of character clips and so forth. All right, you guys, you can go get them right there. You have your project also with all the assets that you have in your project. Nobody uses this here. I never seen anybody using it here. It's very useful to browse your project from within, from within Maya. All right, because you get everything right of your scene right there, even the render of images and stuff like that, even the shaders. All right, so it's a very quick way to access everything too. Anyway, so I like to keep putting in there too. All right? So that's why I always like that. Now you have a time range selection option. Okay? You have selected. <coughs> and if you choose selected, you need to go down in your timeline right here and shift, drag, select where you want it. All right? That's how you select it. Okay, you guys? I am careful with that for a simple reason that sometimes the selection is tricky with Maya. Okay, so you might miss, mess up a, a, a little bit, but I, I do it. I like it like that too. Then you have the time slider. That would be the old time slider in our situation. That wouldn't be 1 to 48, but 1 to 24. The inside slider, Spencer, represents the segments you're working on. So, that, do you see the outside numbers, the 1 and the 48? Okay, those represent the range of your full animation, all right? The inside number 1 to 24 represent what you see in your viewport at the moment. It's the segment you want to be working on. Okay. That's part of it, all right? 